Now, one of the first things that, that you got to keep in mind when you're dealing with uh, operating systems is, well, how am I going to deploy that operating system? And what are the tools that are available? And before you can jump in and start working with hands-on, it's very important that you understand the concepts of what's available in terms of deployment tools. So I want to kind of go through that with you right now. Here we are uh, looking at um, some, some information on deployment tools and what are the different uh, deployment options that are available. So the, of course the first thing we could do is we could just do the good old fashioned fresh install or or what's called a high touch installation or some people refer to it as a high touch deployment and that is basically just taking a copy of windows on a flash drive or if you still have DVDs, you could use a DVD and you could pop that into a computer and you could uh, boot off that flash drive or off that DVD or whatever and you could install Windows fresh on the computer. You, you can, it's bootable, so you could boot off of it. You could blow away whatever's on the hard drive and install the operating system fresh. Now, the great thing about that is it's easy. There's, it, is, there's, it doesn't take a lot of technical abilities, a lot of setup. It's great if you're just going to install one or two machines. Now, of course, when you start getting into the concepts of, well, you know, what happens if I've got to deploy a lot of machines? What, you know, what if I got to do 20 or 30 or 50 machines, you know, at a time? Um, then that's where the fresh install kind of falls apart. Number one, you don't want to be running around with 50 flash drives in your hand or 50 DVDs and popping them in computers and installing. But number two, one of the other issues that you run into there is that um, it's not going to install any applications. You're just going to get the fresh install of the operating system. So what if you, you know, what if your boss walks up to you and says, "Hey, I need to deploy 50 machines. We need uh, these 50 machines set up by next week sometime." And of course, you got to do it as quickly as possible. Running around with 50 flash drives or, or DVDs or whatever is probably not going to be the quickest way to get that done, right? So there are other options. You have uh, imaging, of course, uh, imaging using Windows ADK uh, and the MDT, which I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a moment. But um, so this a Windows ADK, which we're going to talk about more, and the MDT, we're going to talk about more. But the Windows ADK is the Windows Assessment and Deployment Toolkit. This is uh, essentially a um, a tool that is, or a toolkit that's going to basically bring a bunch of tools and make those tools available for you. It's one download. It's free. You download it off Microsoft's website. You get it for free. It extracts all these tools and it makes these tools available for you to uh, you utilize imaging. Okay, uh, and this is uh, this. You can also download what is called MDT, the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, to go with that. And the way you you sort of want to look at it is the MDT, the Microsoft uh, Deployment Toolkit, is like a, a workbench. So imagine that you're gonna you're a, a, a carpenter or something, and you're gonna build something. Okay, um, the MDT is like your workbench. Okay, uh, it's it's a, it's a space to help you organize this whole process of imaging. Okay, and then the Windows ADK is the various tools and, if you will, machinery that would be used, right? If you were a carpenter and you were building something, you would have various machines to help you do that, various tools to help you do that. The Windows ADK is, is what that is. So it's a kit of, of tools, essentially, that are going to help you with this deployment. And the MDT is a graphical interface that's going to help you keep everything organized. Now, with, uh, with these two things, they're both free you can achieve what they call a light touch installation or LTI okay light touch installation essentially means that you're gonna um, you're gonna start a deployment uh, over the network to a machine and when you go through that process of making this deployment occur um, you're still gonna have to put your hands on the computers a little bit um, it's not gonna automate every little process for you okay um, it's it's essentially going to require you to start each machine and um, run a command to either capture an image or deploy an image. It's going to be very quick. It's not going to be a lot of work. It's going to be a lot faster than running around with 50 DVDs or flash drives in your hand or whatever, but you are still going to have to put your hands on each computer. Okay, That's why they call it a light touch installation. Now, you can utilize what's called the MDT as well as Endpoint Configuration Manager. You might be familiar with uh, SCCM. You might have heard of that over the years. 
um, system uh, center configuration manager now it did get a name change to endpoint configuration manager but um, it's a it's a product that you can purchase and you can license it's a very powerful product and with that you can automate the entire process and you can achieve what is known as a zero touch installation which basically means that you could you can have this piece of uh, the server software that's going to um, communicate with your machines and automate the process of capturing images and deploying images okay now I'm not gonna get into a lot of depth on that right now just understand that basic idea uh, let's keep it simple in this particular video um, that's the idea it's gonna automate the whole process and you can achieve what they call ZTI or zero touch installation okay the next is Windows Autopilot. Now, if you want to say, okay, there's a there's a new way of doing things. This is the newer way of doing things, Autopilot. And it isn't all that new. It's been out for years now, but it's new to a lot of people. Whereas the imaging idea has been around since the 1990s. Uh, Autopilot, you know, has, has just been around a few years. So it's a it's a newer idea. And the the, the idea of autopilot, you're gonna use in the Microsoft world, you use what's called Intune. Intune is Microsoft's MDM, MAM product. That's mobile device management, mobile application management product. It's a cloud-based product. And basically what happens is you can buy new machines and you can register what is known as a device ID for each of those machines. Now, I'm not getting into the details of all that in this video, but basically you register the device IDs of these machines. And as long as these machines, when they boot up, um, and have an internet connection, they can communicate with Intune in the cloud and they'll automatically do this, which is really neat. And, uh, and Intune can configure these machines. Now, if you think about one of the things you hate about uh, new machines, you go out and buy new machines that already have Windows installed and Windows comes with all this crappy software that you don't want that's installed through the vendor, like maybe you purchased a bunch of computers from Dell or, or HP or somebody like that, well, you've, you've bought all this software, you bought all these computers with this software you don't want, uh, Windows Autopilot can actually wipe all that crappy software away, you can get rid of it, and um, it will reconfigure everything for you. Now, Autopilot is an Intune-based system. You do have to have a license for Intune. On the flip side, there is a, a thing called provisioning packages. I'll tell you a little bit more about that. That uh, is similar to Autopilot that doesn't cost any money. But Autopilot is a, a, a licensed-based thing. Good news is if you get a lot of the Microsoft 365 licenses, you automatically get it. So it's it's just included as a license that you can get. Um, you're not paying any extra money. So if you really want to know what Microsoft wants you to really focus on these days, it's Autopilot. That's the, the process. The, the imaging system is an older idea. It's a great concept, um, but Autopilot doesn't require you to blow away machines and, and redeploy anything. Autopilot lets you reconfigure things or what they call reprovision things, as opposed to blowing something away and um, and re you know redoing it. Um, so that's what autopilot is in a nutshell. I'm not going to get into a lot more depth in this video. Uh, then you have an in-place upgrade. In-place upgrade is a real simple idea. You have an older version of Windows and you upgrade to the new version of Windows. Okay. Um, and the great thing about doing an in-place upgrade is if you do an in-place upgrade, you don't have to reinstall any kind of software or any of that. The software will go with you. The downside of doing an in-place upgrade is sometimes if you have a, uh, an older operating system that has some software that's sort of corrupted and has problems, when you do that in-place upgrade to the new version of Windows, um, that, that corrupted software goes into that new version. So the downside of that is you may have problems that come uh, from the old operating system to the new operating system. All right, let's talk about Windows ADK a little bit more. So I was telling you that Windows ADK is sort of like a, a it's a toolkit, right? It's free. You download it off Microsoft's website. It gives you all these various tools that will assist you with uh, dealing with Windows uh, deployments, all right? So the first thing is the application compatibility toolkit. This is called ACT. And right now, and, and really this is all you need to focus on, you don't have to be an expert on every one of these, but you need to know just a little bit about each one. And that's what we're looking at in this video, okay? So the, uh, the Application Compatibility Toolkit is, uh, again, it comes with Windows ADK, it's free, you install that. And the neat thing about it is it has the ability 
Um, you install it on a computer in your environment, and you can tell it to scan other computers in your environment. And it will inventory what software is on those computers and tell you if there's going to be any incompatibility issues. So, for example, let's say you're running an older version of Windows, and you're going to be going into a newer version of Windows, and... Um, you're worried about compatibility problems. Maybe you have some older software that you bought like 10 years ago. And this is something we all run into in IT probably. Uh, as a consultant, I can tell you that I've ran into this so many times where you know I come into somewhere and, uh, to do a job and, and what happens is you get a company that they bought software 10 years ago and they spent a lot of money on the licensing for it. They don't want to let go of it. Um, because they spent all that money and so basically what ends up happening is they want to hold on to it uh, for 10 years or 15 years and so now you got this old software that was meant for a very old version of Windows and they're wanting to run it on this new version of Windows. Maybe it runs on the current version it's on but then you've got a new version of Windows that just came out and you need it to run on that new version. Well ACT, the great thing about it is it can download this database of um, what are called patches and shims and um, it can scan your network and tell you if any of these uh, any of your software is incompatible and then it could potentially allow you to install these little patches or shims uh, these little pieces of software that could fix compatibility problems um, so it'll scan it'll tell you hey you're you got this piece of software that's not compatible with the new version of Windows so if you do deploy the new version of Windows it's not gonna work however it might have a patch that you can deploy that'll fix that so then you have user state migration tool or USMT, okay? So user state migration tool is, it's actually a command line tool that has two little um, programs in it that are usually used. One is called scan state, one is called load state. And this is used for migration. So what's a migration? The idea would be you have a user who is going to be, um, maybe they uh, have an old computer, it's out of date, it's outdated, and they're going to be getting a new computer. And of course, what's that user going to stress about? The user is going to be worried about all their stuff, right? All, all of my data is on this old computer and I want to move over to the new computer. So by doing what's called a scan state, it will back up all of their data and you can back it up wherever you want. You can back it up to a flash drive or back it up across the network. Uh, and then you can do a load state to the new computer and it'll restore everything and it'll put it all right back uh, as closely as it possibly can to the way it was on that old uh, on the old computer to be on the new computer. And that, so you could even be going from an older operating system to a newer operating system and it should be able to sort of match up where things should go on the computer. That's the idea of user state migration tool. Then you have DISM, Deployment Imaging Servicing and Management. So we talked about what a, a light touch deployment, a light touch installation, all that is. DISM is, the, is a command line tool that can capture images on a hard drive. So it can capture all the data stored into what's called a WIM file, which is a Windows imaging file. And then you can deploy that out to uh, a new computer. So when we talk about the Windows ADK, we talk about MDT and all that, DISM is a tool that does the capturing all right, of images and deployment of images. Then you have Volume Activation Management Tool, VAMPED. Um, volume Activation Management Tool is a tool that will scan all the computers in your network and tell you which computers are activated and which computers are not activated. Uh, so it's a great way just to get a, a, an inventory of machines in your environment to make sure that all the machines are activated. You can actually even activate machines remotely using that tool. Then you have ICD, the uh, Imaging Configuration Designer. Um, uh, image Configuration Designer is what we use to build what are called provisioning packages. So I was talking about Autopilot a little earlier. Autopilot is a cloud-based solution that uh, it, it usually you're going to use Intune in the Microsoft world to use it. And the idea is and if you get a, a new computer, instead of blowing away the machine and putting a new image on it, you can reconfigure the machine. Even if you buy a new computer and it's got a bunch of old software on it or a bunch of uh, software that's been put on it from somebody like Dell or HP, uh, you can use these little things called provisioning packages and run. Uh, you can build these provisioning packages. And they're basically just little files that have everything in it that you want to change about a computer, including you can tell Windows to just basically wipe off all software that's not native to Windows. In other words, if Dell or HP has put a bunch of crap software on the computer you don't want, it'll just wipe it off. And then you can also tell it, hey, I want to install this piece of software. Hey, I want you to uh, reconfigure the settings on Windows to do certain features or have certain features turned on or off. And it'll do that. 
that's uh, what a provisioning package will do. Same thing Autopilot Intune can do, but uh, ICD is free, it doesn't cost anything. Now, the downside of that is it's an on-premise based solution. So it doesn't, you know, the great thing about Autopilot is the computers could be traveling, they could be anywhere in the world and they could be reconfigured. With with uh, Image and Configuration Designer, you do have to have network connectivity in an on-premise environment. And that kind of gives you an idea in a nutshell. Again, that's all I'm doing in this video is just giving you some information to uh, is an overview here all right so we're not looking in any depth on these right now then you have UEV user experience virtualization um, what this is is a way of storing so Microsoft had roaming profiles back in the day roaming profiles allowed a user to have all of their uh, this person's desktop setting shortcuts screensaver wallpaper and when they jump from one Windows machine to another on the network if they moved around all that would follow them. Well, roaming profiles was not a very efficient way to do it. So user experience virtualization is a newer way to do things where um, it, it's more efficient than roaming profiles. But I will tell you a little secret about that. They've kind of deprecated this now. Uh, they still kind of want you to know what it is, but ultimately they've moved to a better way of doing it and a cloud way of doing it um, with the help of OneDrive that Microsoft pushes right now. They've um, They've got some better ways of storing user information than, than uh, doing it on the network. Of course, everything, they're trying to really push the cloud stuff, and so that's what you really want to focus on. So UEV is kind of dying out, but it is still available. Then you have AppV, Application Virtualization. AppV, in a nutshell, is a way of packaging up apps into a single file and making that app available across the network. So imagine if you could take a, a program of some kind, okay? Like let's say you've got um, a PDF editing software of some kind. You could uh, like Foxit or something. You could uh, package up that Foxit PDF writing software and um, you could store it on a server. Now this would mean that a user would not have to have that software installed on their computer. They could have a shortcut put on their desktop to where when they open that shortcut, it actually remotes into that package that's running on a server. It pulls it up into memory on the machine and the person uses it remotely. All right, now that just gives you a basic idea of, of AppV. Another thing that's great about AppV is because the software is stored in one file, the, the file can be encrypted and it can be digitally signed, which means there's no way for a virus or anything like that to infect that file without it, uh, without the operating system knowing and making the file uh, unusable at that point. All right, this is sort of a similar concept to how we have, why our phones and tablets and things like that are so secure. Okay, then you got performance and assessment tools. Those are uh, tools that allow us to scan computers for checking performance and doing assessment tests and things like that. It's good too if you're going to do upgrades. It's going to tell you if there's going to be any hardware issues, um, making sure that uh, you know there's not going to be any hardware issues if you're doing the upgrade. So then you have Windows PE. That's the pre-installation environment. Microsoft has made this available as a separate download now, so it doesn't necessarily have to be part of the Windows ADK anymore. But Windows PE is the pre-installation environment. So when you're going to do an image, if you're going to capture an image or deploy an image, you're going to run DISM. Windows PE is a um, very, very lightweight command line version of Windows. It'll fit on a flash drive. It'll fit on a CD. It'll fit on a DVD. Um, it can be, it can run across the network when you're doing uh, imaging. But basically, uh, and if you know what. Pixie is the pre-boot execution environment where a computer can boot up across a network with nothing on it. Um, PE can be downloaded into memory. And basically, uh, you can use DISM, the command called DISM, Deployment Imaging Servicing Management, to capture a Windows image or deploy a Windows image. Now again, remember, all I'm doing in this video is just giving you some basic knowledge here. I'm not going into a lot of depth here, so you might still not quite understand that. That's okay. All right? All right, and then finally, just to overview the MDT a little deeper. Remember, MDT, uh, Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, this is the analogy I use for that is like if you were a carpenter, you would have a, a workbench, right? In fact, you'll notice on the screen there, it says Deployment Workbench. This is a free graphical tool that Microsoft provides that helps you organize deployments and manage deployments. So that's what it's all about. Like you'll see on the screen there that it mentions 
applications, it mentions operating systems, it mentions out-of-box drivers, packages, task sequences, uh, monitoring. So you know you you can in, you can have applications that you want to deploy with your image. You can have operating systems. You have drivers that you want to include. Packages. Uh, uh, this gets into um, you know dealing with uh, the pr uh, provisioning packages I mentioned. You have task sequences. Task sequences are little uh, files that help automate the process of imaging. All right. Um, but that's what the MDT is. It's the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. It's free. It's a workbench. It's a graphical tool to assist you in uh, in working with the imaging process. All right. Okay. So I hope this gives you a good overview of these deployment tools to help you understand and kind of visualize. Again, I wasn't doing any hands-on here, though I will do tons and tons of hands-on in the course here, but I wanted you to get just a, a little bit of an understanding of these various tools, and hopefully um, I've achieved that in this video. Hey, this is John Christopher. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I want you to know that I'm trying really hard to grow this channel, so I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. Also, if you'll check the description in this video, I've got a link for you that can show you how you can get access to all my different courses. I have lots of different Microsoft certification courses that'll help you pass your exam. All right, thanks a lot for watching the video, and I hope to see you again. <music>